Hello, my name is Rickard, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to recreate this fictional movie poster in Photoshop. This is a project that's included in my brand new Photoshop Creators Toolkit. So if you'd like to follow along, go ahead and download the toolkit. I've included a link to it in the description of this video, and then let's dive into Photoshop. Okay, let's go to new file. I'm going to make this 23 by 35, which is a standard movie poster size. I'm going to leave the resolution at 72 and then hit create. Let's go ahead and set up some basic guides. So to do that, I'm going to go to view, guides, new guide layout. And here I want to do four columns and get rid of the gutter. And then I want to do five rows, get rid of the gutter, and then hit OK. So now i got some basic guides in place. The next thing I want to do is do File, Place Embedded, and in my assets I've got this Maria file from Unsplash. This is just a kind of um, city hall or courthouse background. And the next thing I want to do here is I want to cut this into a couple layers. Uh, this is just going to help us when we're adding our atmosphere depth to add a little bit of separation of depth. So I want to get inside here. So basically from here around here to there as one layer. And then maybe this here as another layer even behind that. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to do the pen tool for this. So let's go onto the pen tool. Make sure this is on path. This is just an easy way to make selections, um, especially with a lot of straight lines like we have here. So just make a line there, kind of goes to here. And to make a curve, you're just going to click and then drag. And then to make a straight line, just click and stop. So we're going to go around here. Just follow the shape of this down to here. And then here we'll go down to the ground. Go across and then up the side of this one. And I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time making this super accurate because I'm just using it to cut out a atmosphere background. I'm not using a precise measurement here. So let's go make selection. I want to invert this selection, which I can do with this little icon here. And then I'm going to do Command J. So now I have this as a foreground layer to what's behind there, which is what I want. And then the last thing is I also want this pillar right here to be its own element of that background. So let's go ahead and just make a selection of this pillar. And again, this is somewhat rough because I'm only going to be using it as kind of a window for my atmosphere. Good enough. Let's right mouse click, make selection, and then I'm going to do Command J. So there you go. I now have pillar, foreground, or stairs, and then background. All right, next let's pull in our subject. I'm going to do File Open, and I'm going to grab this Auntie. Samarjija file. Again, this is one I got from Unsplash. 
I'm just going to go to my selection tool, go to Cloud Detailed, and select Subject. And then if we hit Q on our keyboard, that'll bring up the quick mask. We can see how the selection looks. And it looks really good except for this here. So let me just go on to my brush tool, grab a normal brush here. I'm going to go ahead and make my brush smaller. And then I want to paint in here with white the parts that I missed. And what a quick mask is doing is it's just turning your selection into a temporary mask that you can paint with your black or white brushes to clean up. And then when you hit Q again, it turns it back into a selection. So I'm going to do Command C for copy. Go ahead and close this and then do Command V. I'm going to convert this to a smart object and then we'll call this subject. I'm going to do Command T for transform and make him smaller. And I want him standing at the very top of the step here. So I can also turn on my guides with Command semicolon and just make sure he's centered. About there. And I want him reaching to about that center guide there. Well, maybe a little taller. Maybe make his face kind of centered there. So something like that. Okay, now we're going to start diving into our toolkit. So let's go ahead and open our libraries and make sure we have our Nuclear Creators Toolkit here. I'm actually going to move the library to the top here. That way when I open it, I have more real estate to see everything inside. And what I want to do here is I want to use some of these light um, overlays to create more separation between our foreground and our background. So first I'll just grab this one here and make it kind of the size of my image so that the light's coming in from the top there. And let's change this to screen blending mode and let's put it behind our pillar. So this is really just happening in the background there as you can see. All right then I want another one which is this one that has a little more volume to it meaning there's more obvious light right here where it's hitting that uh, steam or smoke. I'm going to flip it horizontal so it's falling in the same direction as the other one make it a little bit bigger kind of change the angle to better match the other light ray so something like this and then I'll also put this on screen now you'll notice that as I move this there's a little line right here that's always something to be careful of when you're using overlays if they do have an edge like this it just means they're not going to full black right there so to fix that I can do command M to bring up my curve just take my black point which is the bottom left here and bring it in until this little white line disappears so just bring that in right there the line disappears Okay, so that looks good. And I can experiment whether I want this in front or behind, but I think having it behind looks best. So there you have it. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna bring in some falling leaves. So let's go down here to our foreground elements I go to the very top of my layer stack and bring in this autumn leaves. And you can see what that's doing is it's creating this nice kind of design of leaves falling around our character. And let me just move this around. I want to make sure we're not imposing on him too much, but he still feels kind of in the center of it. So right about there looks good. And now with all these falling in the foreground, it would make sense that there was also leaves falling in the background behind him. So I'm going to go to here below my nuclei texture, below this cloud in the background, and grab these other autumn leaves and just pull them in there. And we'll kind of size these down a little bit so that they look proportionally sized behind him there. So just like that. 
And then finally, just to finish up our illusion of these falling leaves, I want to have a couple really big ones in the foreground that look like they're really close to the camera and also out of focus because of that. So we have these individual leaves and that's what they're for. I'm going to grab one of these here, make it quite a bit bigger. And I want to add a lot of Gaussian blur to that. So I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And I basically just want the hint of the shape left. Otherwise, most of it should just look like a blurry color. So something like this. And then I'm going to do one more. And this will be the more orange looking leaf. And I'll do that one here. And I want to apply the same Gaussian blur to this. If I go to filter and just go down directly below filter, this will apply the same filter. So just like that. So now that I have all that in place, I want to add some titles. However, I do want to add a little bit of darkness here just so that my title has a backdrop. So I'm going to go all the way here to my background, add a new layer. I'm going to call this gradient. I'm going to go onto my gradient tool, make sure I'm on classic gradient, make sure I'm on a foreground to transparent, and then make sure my foreground color is black. And I'm just going to go kind of from this top corner here and down like so. I'm going to set this to maybe 70. Um, in terms of the opacity here so that we still see a little bit of the detail from this. I'm going to take a copy of this gradient and hold down option. So I'm making a copy of the layer and drag it to the top here. So as you can see, it's way too strong. I'm going to move it up until it's basically not hitting his face at all. All it's doing now is just making these top leaves a little darker there. And just to be on the safe side, I'm going to add a mask and with a very soft brush and using black, just paint out right of the middle here. Make sure none of this gradient is hitting my character. OK, and the other thing I want to do before adding my titles is add a color grade on top of the whole thing. And this is where my adjustment presets are going to come in. So here we can hover over these. And right away, you can see we've got these really nice color grades. I kind of like this blue one, although it is crunching my blacks a bit, which I'm not crazy about. Let's take a look at the other ones. Oh, this one, this one might be better because it's not really crunching my blacks. So, Although I like the color of this one better. OK, I'm going to use this one, but I'm just going to go in here and just raise the darks a tiny bit in my RGB curve. And I'm pretty happy with that. And I kind of want to push those blues even stronger. So I'm going to go in here and just push up the blues a little more. So we get a really nice strong blue in our shadows there. OK, so I'm happy with that color grade. The next thing I want to do is add my title. So uh, this is for an imaginary book or an imaginary uh, movie called Justice Falling. So let's go ahead and add that title. I'm going to use Trajan for this. And I'm going to do Justice. And then as a separate word, falling that way I can control the size of them independently because I want the J to kind of fall between the A and the F there of falling so something like that I'm going to select both of these kind of move them so that they're right on top of that guide there and maybe a little bit bigger so something like that all right I'm going to do command semicolon to turn off those guides and now what I want to do is look at some of our layering styles to see which one would look good here. So that one looks terrible. That one's not great. That one's better. I kind of like it because the letters and the leaves share a similar color. 
that one the red doesn't really make sense i like this one um the blue's a little bit different from the background but that should be pretty easy to fix and i like that it has a similar relationship of blue to gold to the background as well so that's probably my favorite um i would maybe want to make the gold a little more prominent so for that we're going to go right mouse click on the fx logo and go down to scale effects and let's see what happens if we make this a little bit bigger and i think around 150 is about correct and let's do the same to the other one and then now that we've done that i feel like the blue in our color grade needs to move just a little more towards cyan so it's a little more purple here and a little more blue in the title and i kind of prefer the blue of the title so i'm just going to go down to our adjustment layer go in here go to my reds maybe add a little more blue and then go to our greens and just take a little bit of magenta out there so something like that now that's a little closer to that blue color there so that's pretty much all I would do and you could see where we use these overlays obviously we have other tools in our toolkit that we can use I've got some other styles that I can use I could also look at some of these other color grades and also within our libraries here so if we go back to our libraries you can see if I wanted to maybe add a little flair to the titling we could do that so let's try that maybe i want just a little bit of this gold kind of giving a nice shine so i could take maybe this flare here load that into my document put it at the very top of the layer stack put this on screen and then just line this up so that it falls where there's a highlight on my type. So maybe right there. And you can see how even that kind of gives that nice touch. It's putting a little too much stress on the C there. So maybe I'd want it here instead. Maybe somewhere here. That way it's leading us into the beginning of that word. If this were a little more action packed, maybe I could add some embers in here, put this on screen, but that would certainly change the tone of this poster into uh, something more destructive happening in that background. You know, maybe there's a, an accident, you know, definitely a little more in the action category of things, but you get an idea of how easy it is to use these elements in our design and you can see how with just two photos and our creators toolkit we're able to create an entire book cover so there you have it that completes our poster and as I mentioned at the beginning this project and all the tools I used in this tutorial are part of my brand new Photoshop creators toolkit this is your ultimate starter pack to take your designs to the next level Inside, you'll find professional quality overlays, brushes, textures, adjustment presets, titling styles, and more, along with step-by-step -step tutorials that'll guide you through using each tool like a pro. Whether you're adding cinematic lighting, creating dramatic composites, or perfecting your adjustments, this toolkit is designed to help you save time and unlock your creative potential. So go ahead and download it. Again, I have included the link below. Otherwise, here's some other tutorials to check out, and I'll see you next time.